and welcome to In the World, where we take a look at current events and recent news and discuss them from a Christian perspective. My name is Greg, and this is Jamie, and uh, we've been uh, on these uh, the past couple months, but this is our first time it joining is. forces together, to so uh, uh, pr- appreciate uh, uh, being with you here today. So we have three stories here today that uh, have been in the news. We'll uh, go through them and uh, uh, see see what we all think about those. So uh, let's go ahead and get star- started with story number one. Uh On November 6th, the United States held its midterm elections in which various members of the Senate, House of Representatives, and many state offices were up for election. Prior to the election, Republicans held a majority in each House, 240 seats to 194 in the House of Representatives and 52 to 46 uh, in the Senate, with two independents uh, caucusing with the Democrats. Before the election, Democrats were calling for a blue wave as an indictment of the policies of President Donald Trump, asking for voters to oust a large number of Republican incumbents and give the Democrats control of both houses. This was always going to be an easier task in the House than in the Senate. Far more democratically held seats were up for re-election in the Senate than those held by Republicans, including several Democrats representing traditionally right-leaning states. So the Democrats have reclaimed the majority in the House of Representatives, although not as many seats as they perhaps had hoped, taking a 225 to 200 majority, with 10 races still being decided. Of those 10, six are currently leaning Democrat, while the other four are leaning Republican. In the Senate, however, the Republicans appear to have strengthened their majority, flipping three seats versus only one gain on the Democratic side. Three seats currently remain undecided. So this has been a very uh, contentious uh, uh, election cycle. Uh, uh, I'm so glad it's over. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's great, great that it's over with. Um, I think, I mean, there's a, there's a few things, a few ways we could uh, we could go here. Uh, lots of different things that we could talk about. It certainly wasn't the blue wave that was anticipated. No, not at all. Um, and uh, so when something like that happens. Everybody claims victory in their own ways, right. um, and that is what it is. Um, I, I do. I, I'm. I'm disappointed that you know, some some races are so close that we, we start this back and forth with demanding recounts. Um, you know, we'll see a, 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 some consistent themes with the the three stories that we're talking about today, uh, but but the. The one thing that we should remind ourselves is that we're still, with all our faults, still by far living in the best country in the world. Amen. And, um, you know, the founding fathers set up uh, an amazing system uh, where we have the freedom to, to vote in regular elections. Um, you know, it you does c- seem like there was ha- a higher voter turnout this time. There seemed to yeah. be a lot more attention yeah. to the voter turnout, and it, it seems to have come to fruition. Yeah, yeah. Both both sides used the, the their animosity against the other side to to drum up that uh, Definitely. extra support and enthusiasm and, and uh, uh, which resulted in higher uh, voter turnout. Uh, record numbers of early voting, which is becoming right. uh, more and more uh, uh, convenient for folks. You know, there's a lot of traditionalists that still want to go on election day. Uh, I was one of those folks uh, years ago, but uh, uh, I've I've benefited from the convenience of early voting. So I've I've used that as well. Um, I think that when it comes to elections and and, and when we're trying to decide who to vote for, you know, from a Christian perspective, I think the, the main thing that I try to remind myself is that what should remain supreme in our in our worlds uh, is God's law right and uh, but at the same time uh, there's a lot of scriptural references uh, in, in the Old and New Testament that talk about how we we should adhere to our uh, the authority of, of the governments you know that, that, that we're a part of um, so as long as the, the our governments and, and, and the, the rules and laws that we put in place, don't conflict with our godly rules, uh, then um, 
we should make sure that we're following those rules. And 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 and, I, and that can sort of tie into you know the, these lawsuits and these challenges. Sometimes you, you'll see politicians and people. Um, tee up lawsuits just because they didn't like the outcome, right? Um, where where that has, may have nothing to do with uh, whether that's something illegal has happened. So, I hope that the tone um, that we've been experiencing over the last couple weeks, months, and years changes a little. I feel like maybe we have a little momentum to kind of, you know, pacify a few people and, and start being a little kinder, gentler nation. I, you don't I, seem I, optimistic. I, I, I'm definitely not optimistic <laughs> about that. Uh, it, and we don't have time to get into <laughs> how we could solve that problem. But, uh, you know, between um, term limits and uh, the elimination of gerrymandering and redistricting reform, those would be the, the the steps in the right direction to where it would create an atmosphere where more compromise would be uh, necessary to uh, hold your position of power. Right. So, we'll cross our fingers on that one. Yeah. Ready for story number two? Our second story. On October 12, 2018, people from Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador gathered in Honduras to begin a caravan toward the United States, alleging they were attempting to escape violence, poverty, and political repression in their native countries. The caravan has progressed through Guatemala and into Mexico, fluctuating in size as more people joined and sometimes groups broke off. At its largest point, it was estimated to have reached approximately 7,000 people. The main caravan has also inspired several others to launch, bucking the previous trend of trying to go unnoticed, instead opting for larger groups and hoping for safety in numbers. The largest caravan of 4,000 is prepared to leave Mexico City, with a group of about 900 having broken off and headed toward Tijuana. It appears the group's plan to head for the California border, even though it means a longer trip. The territory along a shorter, more direct route is considered too dangerous due to Mexican drug activity. California is also believed to be more open to accepting the migrants in. President Trump has responded by sending military personnel to provide additional support along the border. He has also enacted an executive order stating that the only people who enter the country through designated border crossing checkpoints will be considered for asylum, something his political opponents claim con contradicts existing law. Christian groups have also been split on the appropriate response to the caravan, with some noting Jesus' call to help those in need, some specifically citing the feeding of the 5,000, while others claiming that we also owe a duty to those already living in the United States, part of which requires us to maintain, maintain control of our borders. This story is is taking on a life of its own, and, and it's, yeah. it's, it is a struggle to, to how to respond to that from a Christian perspective. But overall, I mean, it's it's our laws. It's our, it's our country, and you have to follow the laws of our country if you want to come here. And if 7,000 people want to come and become Americans, then, then I welcome them. But you have to go about it the right way, and you can't just— 7,000 people show up at the door for dinner time. I mean, we, we don't have, <laughs> we don't have that kind of hospitality yeah. here in the United States. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, this, this goes back to, uh, looking at God's law and looking at, at the, the law of our land. Right. Um, obviously, uh, Jesus commands us to love one another. Um, and, uh, we're, we're called to, uh, reach out to anyone in need around the world, you know, persecuted uh, people around the world. And there are rules and, and laws that have been in place in our country for, for uh, decades, for generations. You know, this specific uh, circumstance, we're talking about um, uh, what would be considered refugees. These are people that uh, claim to be uh, fleeing uh, violence and poverty and political repression. So, but there's, 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 a system set up for for these types of situations. Um, the the Refugee Act of 1980 uh, created an annual cap for the number of refugees and asylum seekers that uh, we can uh, bring in on an annual basis. Uh, it gives the executive branch the authority to designate on an annual basis the number of people that we're going to uh, bring in. You know, there, so it's an annual cap, if you will. Um, and, and there are certain criteria that are appropriate for uh, refugees, uh, specifically uh, if they've been persecuted in their home country due to race, religion, political opinion, etc. cetera. Um, however, extreme poverty uh, and crime are not necessarily, you know, part of that criteria. And, and what's your plan once you get here? What was your plan when you left with your family and yeah. subjected them to this yeah. journey? And what's yeah. your plan once you get here? 
So there's definitely when you look at you know the the numbers over the past forty years or so, you know the 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 number of refugees and asylum seekers that we've brought in over the years, you know, can range anywhere from twenty thousand to two hundred thousand. I think nineteen eighty may have been a, a high water mark, you know, over the past you know forty fifty years. Uh, at 200,000. But again, you, you know, depending on the, the circumstances of uh, world events at that time, you know, it's either, you know, people fleeing Vietnam for, for certain reasons, people fleeing the Soviet Union for certain reasons, um, and more recently has been Latin America. Uh, but you, you got to follow the rules that have been set up. If right. you don't like that, like those rules, we, we just held an election and we can change those Absolutely. rules. Absolutely. Agreed. Yeah. It's a it's a kind of a, a tragic situation when I think about you know the families that are that are part of this and and looking at it at a more you know personal approach to it um, because I obviously have tremendous heartfelt feelings about what these families have gone through, what they're continuing to go through, and what they're about to go through because we don't yeah. know what the end result of this is going to be, yeah. and so I definitely continue to pray for resolution of that situation. Absolutely. I mean, it, as Christians, it doesn't mean that we can't still reach out and help people around the world. There, there's missionary efforts around the world for p- people that are being prosecuted for different reasons. So we can still uh, proactively try to help folks, It does, but we don't necessarily need to uh, break the laws of the land you know, for, for how, how our government's going to respond to the situation. Well, there's something to be said for helping yourself, too, and I'm not sure how much they're helping things with this yeah. journey that they're on. Yeah. All right, ready for story number three? Go ahead. Okay. In June of 2009, Asia Bibi, a Christian, was harvesting berries in Pakistan with a group of other female farmhands when she was asked to retrieve water from a nearby well. When she got the water, she took a drink using an old metal cup that was laying near the well. Another woman who was involved in an ongoing feud with Bibi's family saw her and became angry, telling her, It was strictly forbidden for a Christian to drink out of the same utensil as Muslims. The group made disparaging remarks about Christianity and insisted that she convert to Islam. In response, Bibi stated, I believe in my religion and in Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for the sins of mankind. What did your prophet Muhammad ever do to save mankind? And why should it be me that converts instead of you? An argument erupted, I bet. After Bibi returned home, a mob entered her house, beating her and members of her family before she was arrested and taken away by police. After her arrest, new accusations arose, including a Pakistani police officer giving an interview to CNN and claiming Bibi had said things such as, the Quran is fake and your prophet remained in bed for one month before his death because he had worms in his ears and mouth. She was in prison for a year before being formally charged with blasphemy, a crime punishable by death. Bibi denied the charges and said she was being accused by an old neighbor in order to settle a score. In November 2010, she was convicted and sentenced to death by hanging. Bibi was placed in solitary confinement for the next several years. In 2014, an appellate court upheld her conviction and death sentence. But on October 8th of this year, 2018, the the Pakistani Supreme Court reversed the conviction and ordered her release. The immediate response in Pakistan was one of outrage by much of the conservative Muslim population. They staged protests, inflicted substantial property damage, and threatened to kill not only Bibi, but also the judges who acquitted her. However, despite her release having been ordered, the radical Islamist party behind the protests entered into negotiations with Pakistani authorities, and on November 2nd, the government agreed to bar her from leaving the country in exchange for an end to the protests. Critics claim that this order was essentially a death warrant for Bibi. Since that time, there have been conflicting reports as to whether she's still in the country. Local news reported that she was departing on a charter plane for the Netherlands where she was being considered for asylum. But Pakistani authorities claim she is still in the country being held in a safe location. What a story. And this just goes back to we live in the best country Amen. at the best Amen. time. <laughs> so, so a few things here. Num- number one, l- 
back to what you said, you know, we, we live in one of the, we, we live by far in the greatest country in the world. And you look at the freedoms that we have, and that includes the, the freedom to express ourselves through our religion. Okay. And, and I would argue, you know, the, the reason why our founding fathers afforded us with such freedoms and liberties was because they had an expectation or an assumption that religion and morality would hold us in check. And you could argue, you know, since we've started taking religion out of the public square, that, that's why we have the, the polarization right. and, the, and, and the animosity that we have today. Lack of tolerance. Yeah, yeah. But just when you think about um, our Christian faith and contrast that with other faiths, if as a Christian— if I see someone that believes in another faith and, 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 and their faith contradicts what I believe, our religion doesn't tell us to harm them, murder them, or to uh, uh, initiate property damage. Correct. Or, uh, or to put Punished them in. by death. Yeah, yeah. You know, Jesus tells us to pray for our enemies. Um, Love so, one another. So, so that just you know is a um, just a stark contradiction contradiction between when our faith and, and, and unfortunately other religions. I'll call them religions. It's that's quite a story, and, and I it, here's an opportunity that I hope she reached asylum. You know, obviously that's you know not a good environment for her ever. That would never be you know a positive situation. So you know, in, in contrast to our last story, I hope that she reached asylum. You know, yeah. In this well, and, and so so this points to a legitimate reason when uh, refugee status and and, right. and, and, a, and asylum seeker is a. This is a legitimate reason. Absolutely. Agreed. Um, you know, she was probably poor also, but that in of itself doesn't warrant seeking asylum. But. And wow, how brave of her to, to say the things that she said and, and stand up for, for her beliefs. Um, she might have taken it a little too far in, in um, how she stood up for herself, but I'm, I'm terribly proud of that woman. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. Well, that's all the time that we have um, for this episode of In the World. Um, we hope you join us next time for a look at topics in the, in the news and in the world from a Christian perspective. Thanks for joining me today, Greg, and we look forward to next time. Hey, if you haven't joined our Patreon yet, would you mind giving it your prayerful consideration? Patreon is a way you can support the Trinity Joppa YouTube channel. We've got multiple tiers to choose from, starting as low as $2 per month. Visit www.patreon.com slash trinityjoppa for all the details. Thank you. God bless.